It's a game well known for bumps and bruises, but no one expected to be knocked down by an invisible foe called carbon monoxide. But for some on this Arvada hockey team that often practices at Apex Ice Arena, a game in Greeley at the Mountain States Ice Arena on January 10th brought them face to face with that possibility. About an hour after we left the rink, we started getting phone calls from other parents from the team that was following us, asking how we felt, telling us what had happened with their team. Players from the other team had fallen ill during their afternoon game in Greeley, and emergency crews quickly determined carbon monoxide was the culprit. That's when parents still in Greeley began calling parents already back in Arvada. I went home and checked on my son and called the Arvada Fire Department right away being that I had a team of 18 and family members that I was concerned about. Annette began calling and emailing players and parents, and thanks to a small device called the RAD 57, their concerns were quickly assessed by firefighters at Station 8. Arvada Fire got the equipment just in the past year and is one of only about nine districts in the entire state to have such a device. That night, it was invaluable. We set up a mini triage center and uh, were able to get uh, 38 patients evaluated and uh, seven were actually transported with CO poisoning to local hospitals. Pride Mark Ambulance teamed up with them. The levels of carbon monoxide in their system ranged anywhere from zero to 20 percent and those transported were all over the board because we used again that litmus test of uh, if they were suffering from symptoms. Um, and they were given priority. Typical readings range from zero to three in non-smokers. Alex Eirich registered 19. Right after the game, I just had a headache, so I went to sleep and I was just super tired. Alex was given oxygen and taken to the hospital. Teammate Andy Goberis came in for testing much later that night. I was treated, I had oxygen, and pretty much they said, you're at the low enough level where you don't need to go to the hospital, but you can if you're really concerned. It was sure a relief to a parent to actually go into the fire department, have us tested, make sure that we were okay, and them to be able to do that on site. And they were just wonderful people there. They were just so helpful, and even at 11 o'clock at night when we all went. Skaters and families continued to show up all evening. We'd have three or four show up, and then it was an all out, you know, we had about 30 people show up. Um, and then towards the end, it, it would slow down again. As the night got on, most of them didn't have that high a reading, so they were just standard routine checks rather than really an emergency. The first ones that showed up had pretty high levels and weren't feeling well and didn't want to be anywhere. Lucky for all, the RAD 57 gave them the information they needed in just minutes. We typically ask for their ring finger of their non-dominant hand, so if they're right-handed, we would use their left, uh, left hand and use their ring finger. Uh, we just place it on their finger and the device works all by itself. It shows us initially he's perfusing at 98 percent oxygen in his system, and his heart rate is 76, and here it's showing that he has 2 percent uh, carbon monoxide in his system. So it only takes a few seconds uh, and uh, it's a non-invasive way for us to test for carbon monoxide poisoning. The meter has an accuracy of plus or minus four. Carbon monoxide is, is, is one of those things that you don't, you don't smell it, you don't see it, you don't know it's there. Um, and, and it's just basically being aware of, of what's going on, uh, knowing how you're starting to feel. And that's the scary part, says Lisa Goberis. We were sitting in that rink and we did not feel bad. We did not know what was happening. And that's really scary that it, you can't feel it. And that's what it's just deadly and it's silent and that's what everybody needs to know. Symptoms of carbon monoxide poisoning include exactly what these skaters and families discovered. Fatigue, headache, nausea, dizziness, confusion, or flu-like symptoms. Winter is an especially dangerous time for carbon monoxide poisonings because people use all kinds of devices to heat their homes, whether it's their furnace or portable heaters, people use ovens, or fireplaces, uh, things like that. So make sure appliances are well maintained and serviced annually. Install carbon monoxide detectors near your sleeping areas where you'll be able to hear them should they go off. Not next to the furnace or appliance you think will give off carbon monoxide, says Captain Hyatt. 
Don't forget to change the batteries at the same time you change them in your smoke detectors each year. And above all, heed this advice from Arvada firefighters. If you're starting to feel sick or something's not, not right, uh, to call 911 and get us out there and we'll come out and check your residence and we'll check you and make sure that you guys are okay. Regardless of whether you think something's going on or not, it's always uh, err on the side of caution. You can find carbon monoxide detectors for your home at most hardware stores and even some grocery stores. They run about $20. As you've probably heard, several deaths from carbon monoxide poisoning across the state this year have prompted the Colorado legislature to consider a measure requiring CO detectors in new home construction. At the time we taped this program, that bill was still making its way through the legislature, which meets until May 6th.